Hello and welcome everyone. We have enjoyed some beautiful spring-like weather this week and I hope you are all able to get outside and enjoy it very much. Welcome to all who are seekers after meaning, music, or retreat. Welcome to Worship with Fallowfield Maryville Pastoral Charge on this fourth Sunday of Lent. Wherever you are and wherever you find yourself on this journey of faith, may you feel at home with our beloved community. Once again, a great big shout out of thanks goes to all the talented people who help bring our online services to you. We are so grateful for their love and dedication to God and our pastoral charge. It was really wonderful having Grace and Seymour uh, from New Brunswick uh, participate in our services the last couple of weeks. Hopefully we'll see them again. We will be offering online services for Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, as well as Easter Sunday. Holy Communion will be celebrated on Palm Sunday, as well as Monday, Thursday. And we hope you will join us for these sacred services. Details will be provided at a later date. It is hard to believe that an entire year has now passed since the World Health Organization declared a COVID-19 global pandemic, and all aspects of our lives changed. Who would have thought we would still be having online worship services and unable to enjoy coffee hours or visits with family and friends? Vaccines are here, but we still have a way to go before the pandemic is over. We do remember that the last major global pandemic a century ago lasted several years and killed 30 to 50 million people. Because we are still under lockdown, there, may not, there are not many announcements with respect to the church activities. One activity, however, that has not stopped is our commitment to the many charitable organizations that need donations at this time of year. Again, it's the Elizabeth Fry Society, Center 507, and the Ottawa Mission, as well as your local food banks. Just a few that need your generosity during these difficult times. A list of these community organizations can be found on our website. If you would like to donate to the church, you can do so online by e-transfer to muchurch at bellnet.ca. Or if you prefer, you can send a check directly to either Maryville Church or Fallowfield Church. The address for each church can be found on our website which is www.maryvalefallowfield.org. And we thank everyone for their continued contributions to our churches and supporting the other organizations in need. Anyone driving by Fallowfield Church may have noticed that there is some hydro work being done in Fallowfield Village. There is a new hydro pole being installed at the corner of the church lot and the lawn is a mess right now. But Hydro will be fixing everything up uh, by spring. These are all the announcements we have today. Now we hope you will enjoy this worship service on the fourth Sunday in Lent. It is about our commitment to making the world a kinder place. May the blessings of the living God be upon us all. Until next time, have a wonderful week, stay safe, and keep well. Today, on this fourth Sunday in Lent, we light the Christ candle, asking God to help us have a free spirit, a love of nature, and a deep respect for life. May we love our faith journey and approach it with a sense of integrity. As we open our spirits up to the divine, may we hear the heartbeat of wholeness. Come, let us worship our Creator.
Won't you please join me in prayer? Gracious God, we come before you in prayer on this fourth Sunday of our journey through Lent. This is a journey of the heart for all of us, and so we pray that we may come to know your compassion as we follow in these sacred footsteps of Jesus. We come into your virtual sanctuary of love, this sacred space of worship where we hear you calling us to renewal and transformation. We come yearning to hear you speak to our hearts and souls, and we come ready to worship in truth and in love. We open our hearts now to your presence that comes to us through the Holy Spirit. Be our vision today that we too may walk the way of the cross, supporting those we meet along the way. May our common humanity draw us closer to you so that we may join together as the human family, caring for creation and each other. And through scripture, song, and prayer, may we hear the call to repentance, the blessing of your forgiveness, and the gift of your light. Amen. Our first reading is from Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 to 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God and they will be my children. Herein is wisdom.
Our second reading is from John chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Herein is good news. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts always be aligned with your love, O God. Amen. This past week, flags across our country were flown at half-mast, and tributes were offered for lost loved ones as we mark the one-year anniversary of COVID-19 being declared a global pandemic. It is so hard to believe that we have been dealing with the stress of this pandemic for so long now. And this virus has taken a toll on everyone in one manner or another. And I, for one, am very grateful to everyone who did and is doing their part in trying to keep us all safe and healthy. I am also very grateful for the hard work of so many folks from our two congregations and because of their dedication, we have been able to worship online for the full year now. I know this has been a very stressful time for so many people, and we are missing family and friends and community. And yet I still believe that we have a lot to be grateful for. The questions for me on this difficult anniversary are, what in our lives through the love of God has been given to us this past year? What wisdom have we gained by going through this pandemic together? Will we emerge from our COVID cocoon more appreciative of humanity and all of God's creation? I believe that giving thanks and being grateful, even during difficult times, is a way of honoring God as the source of all good things. And even though we are in Lent, and Lent is a dark journey in our faith tradition, there is always an underlying theme running through our scriptures, 
And that theme is that God is love, and God loves the world and all of creation. In John's Gospel, Jesus is conversing with Nicodemus when he says the words, for God so loved the world. God doesn't just love humanity or our little neck of the woods. God's love is so much bigger than that. God loves the whole world. And in this scripture, we are called to do likewise. We are called to love all of creation. Now, the challenge for me is, how during difficult times do I embrace the blessing these words are meant to bring? Life can get overwhelming, and we can so easily get all caught up in the negativity. Now, I know when I get overwhelmed with the news and the negativity and the challenges that come with living, especially right now with COVID, I step out into nature and I look around and I am reminded of the words Jesus offers in pointing to God's tender care for all that is. The passage, For God so loved the world, teaches us to live as a human family and as guardians of creation. And I believe that when we celebrate unique differences of others and we embrace nature, it opens our hearts to an even deeper love and appreciation of our faith tradition. Learning to celebrate and embrace others in their unique differences is another way of being thankful to God for the gift of life. And when we revere nature and treat it as sacred, we show gratitude for all that God has created. Jesus calls us to create communities that include and celebrate all people and all creation. And the ancient prophets wrote literature in which they envisioned communities where every individual would be respected and valued. And Jesus throughout scripture voices his respect for humanity, for nature, and for all creatures. Now, in the book of Revelations, John has a vision in which he sees a new heaven and a new earth, a world where all people have enough food and clothing, a safe home to live in, a good education for their children, and medical care for all. His new earth is an earth where people not only take care of each other, but see the earth as a living organism. Liz Bentley in The Mind Unleashed writes, the Gaia hypothesis has stimulated a new awareness of the connectedness of all things on our planet and the impact that man has on global processes. No longer can we think of man's actions in one part of the planet as independent. Everything we do affects the planet. Our scriptures today tell us that when we are ready to emerge from our COVID cocoon, we need to partner with God in creating a new earth. And these scriptures remind us that nature and the teachings of Jesus call us to love each other and to give thanks to God for our many blessings. When we appreciate life and are grateful for what we have, then we can use our wisdom and grace for the good of all humanity and creation. And when we hear the words, for God so loved the world, or just a few people are part of the world, when we hear the words and believe that God loves the whole world, then we will see that all of life is sacred and everything is interdependent. How we live individually affects everyone and everything in this world. I believe that life is an amazing gift and it is our responsibility to protect that which gives us life or that which has been given to us from God as a gift. The world is evolving and sometimes it is hard for us to keep up with all the changes but Jesus calls us to participate in the ongoing evolution of humanity. And Jesus often says, you have heard it said, 
but I fit you. In other words, we are called to grow and be transformed and learn how to be the human family as well as guardians of the planet entrusted to us by God. If Jesus were here today, he would be challenging us to meditate on our faith and ask questions about who we are and what our relationship to God, the universe, and each other is all about. He would be asking us what this year of COVID-19 has taught us. Did we learn to embrace life and to embrace the world? To treat each other and all of creation as sacred? The Jesus message of compassion, love, and nonviolence is wrapped up in those few words. For God so loved the world. Life is to be valued and every day is to be seen as a sacred opportunity to build a new heaven and a new earth. Maybe this past year of COVID-19 has been a doorway to the divine. Maybe it was meant to evoke an immediate, active and compassionate response to all of creation. Jesus invites us this Lent to live life to the fullest, building the kingdom come on earth for God's beloved world. My hope is that we all come through this pandemic grateful for what has been given to us this past year. And may we be grateful for wisdom gained over the past year. And may we also emerge from this pandemic more appreciative of humanity and all of God's creation. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in this period of Lent, we have come to you aware of our unreadiness for the enormity of the Easter message, that Jesus suffered and died for us and all of creation. And so today we pray that in your unfailing love and goodness, you will hear us as we bring forward our prayers for the world and for all of humanity. We give you thanks for your beautiful world, for all its richness and complexity, for the foretaste of spring we have enjoyed this week. And we pray for better awareness of the needs of our planet and our common humanity. We are so grateful for the beauty of your world around us, the sight and scent of spring grass, the sound of birds singing, and the warmth from the March sun. 
We give thanks for the diversity of creation, for the different races, cultures, and faith traditions. May we never take any of this diversity for granted. As we grapple with a global pandemic, we have hope for humanity and that we will emerge a wiser people ready to embrace your world and ready to embrace your peace that passes all understanding. May we hear your voice calling to us to dedicate ourselves to climate justice, racial justice, and equality for all people. This Lent help us to realize that we are all created in your image and that to be a follower of Jesus is to recognize your image in others. For you are our maker and our redeemer, our help, our comfort, our trust, our hope. Praise and glory be to you, O God, now and forever. Amen. Wherever the spirit of Lent has brought you to, walk forth in faith as a beloved child of God. Walk in peace under the wings of the Holy Spirit. And walk in love and compassion, knowing Jesus walks with you. Amen. Mm -hmm.